Hello everyone. Today I'm going to cover importing images from a card, in this case a compact flash card, into Lightroom CC. This is a pretty straightforward process, but there are a couple of gotchas to be aware of. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got Lightroom open here and I've got a compact flash card in my card reader. And I'm just going to go up to File, Import Photos and Videos. Notice that there is a keyboard shortcut. On the Mac it is Shift-Command-I. And when I do that, it's going to bring open this dialog here and it's going to automatically select my, my EOS Digital Compact Flash card here for me. And as you can see, there's a bunch of images on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's move across the screen from left to right. On the left hand side, we have this source panel. So if I wanted to, I could choose any other drive attached to my machine, but I'm going to go with the Compact Flash card for now. And I've got this box checked here. When I'm done importing, I want it to eject the card for me automatically. Now the next thing, let's move to this top panel here quickly, and I'm going to choose copy as DNG. So it's going to take my raw files, my CR2 files, and it's going to convert them to the DNG format. And if I just show you quickly in the Lightroom preferences, you will notice that there's a lot of options for these things. And if I go to file handling, when I import the DNG creation, I'm importing them as DNG. I'm compatible with RAW 7.1 and later. This is the latest version at this time in this version as I make the video. I'm going to ask for medium size previews and I'm going to embed fast load data, but I'm also going to embed the original RAW file. So if at any time in the future I want to go back and edit or work with the CR2 file instead of the DNG file, that's going to be stored in there too. Now obviously that's going to make for a bigger file format uh, in the end and requiring more storage, but it guarantees that I've got the CR2 file. So if by some weird quirk in the future DNG goes away or I stop using it, something like that, I can still get back to the original file that came from the camera. So I just wanted to point that out there. Let's go ahead and hide the preferences. Other options I've got up here. I can either just copy the files to another location directly, so they would remain CR2 files in this case, and then I've got move and add, but I always use copy as DNG. Now moving down here, if I had previously imported some photos from this card, I could click on the new photos filter and it would only show me the ones I haven't previously imported. In this case, I'm just going to go back to all photos, and what I like to do here is quickly remove the ones that I absolutely know I don't want. So for example, this one I don't want, so I've just tapped to select it, and now I'm going to hit the space key to remove, you see it removed the little check mark like we have on this one here, so now that's not going to be imported. Now using the arrow keys, I can actually move around quickly and, and do this and remove the ones I don't want. So for example, I know for sure I don't want this one or that one, and I'm just going to go through and select just very quickly, or deselect I should say, the ones that I know I'm absolutely not interested in for, for whatever artistic or preferential reason that I have. So I'm just looking through. None of these have really worked out. These are a lot of experiments I was doing this morning with moving the camera during exposure just to play around with motion a little bit and get some interesting results. And I know for a fact that none of these are going to work for me or it's not what I was looking for. So I'm just going to get rid of all of those ones. I'll keep that one and I will get rid of that one. Okay, so out of the 54 photos, you can see that I've only selected a few of them. Now let's move over to the right hand side of the panel. And you can see here, I've got it set on the file handling. I'm telling it that I want minimal previews when, you, when I do the import. I want it to build the smart previews as it's doing it. I don't want it to import any suspected duplicates. If I wanted to make a second copy to another location, I could set that here. I'm not going to do that this time, but I would recommend, for example, that you, you know, don't ever store your images in one location. Always have a backup version. So normally when I'm doing importing, I'll import to my master library drive and a backup drive somewhere else. So I've actually got two copies. But in this case, for this demonstration, I'm not going to do that. If I wanted to add them to a collection, I could do that here. I could also rename the files. I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. Now during the import, there's a couple of things I do want to apply. 
I personally do not apply any develop settings, but one of the things I do put on there so I don't have to remember in the future is some metadata. And I've got this one called me standard and I'll, I'll just show it to you quickly. And so what I've got here, I've got one called me standard that automatically applies my copyright details to every image that's imported. And I strongly recommend you do that. If I wanted to add some keywords in here, I can. And in this case, for example, all these images are abstract. So I'm going to add the word abstract, keyword abstract in there. And that'll do for now. In fact, actually, I'm going to add another one. I'm not going to put motion as well. So that's just if I need to find them quickly. If I have multiple images of the same kind of thing, I can apply my keywords on import. And you should always use keywords because as your library gets bigger, it's going to get harder and harder to find these images. Now, moving on to the destination, if I wanted to add a subfolder, I could here. I could also uh, organize them by date or date format. And in this case, I'm going to put them, I'm not going to put them on my Macintosh hard drive. I'm actually going to go down to this one here, which is my master photos. It's an external drive. And this is basically a list of all the possible drives on my machine connected. So I'm going to use my master photos drive. And in this case, I normally put all my images in the photos master. And you can see I got a bunch in here already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them in the miscellaneous folder for right now, because I'm going to work through these, find what I want, and then put them in the right locations later on. I just want to get them into the library. So with all of that done, let's take a quick look at these bottom options here. I can either view a large image like this, or I can use view the thumbnails. I can also automatically check or uncheck all of them. I can sort them by different filter formats here if I wanted. And then I can actually do this to change the size of the thumbnails as well. Now on the import preset, if I wanted to save all of this as a preset, I could to easily go back to it in the future. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to hit the import. And you will see that it now shows in Lightroom on the current import, all of the images that I have selected in this particular instance. Okay, so now the images have been imported. You saw that it ejected the card there. These are all the ones we selected. And up in the top left corner here, you can see it's now processing these files. It's generating the previews and all the necessary functions that need to be done as I import them. And you'll actually see the thumbnails updating as it moves here. But basically that is how you import images into Lightroom. And I'm just going to let that go ahead and finish, but we are done. We have now imported our images from our card into Lightroom. And from here we can start working with them, rating them, developing them, and all of that sort of culling out the bad ones and all of those normal procedures that we do, which I will cover in the future.